I came to bury sleep. The cursed spite that ever I was born to set it Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. All that glisters is not gold. My first uh, big sort of splash happened to be in a play by Shakespeare. It was uh, the Prince of Morocco, you know, the Merchant of Venice, and they asked me to read, and I read and finished, and they all looked at me and they said, well, actually, we'd sort of like you to read it again because it was, you, you, just, you were wonderful. And I said, I can't be. They must be lying. They're going to tell me they're sorry they can't use me. Oh, no, I was hired. And after the, uh, the um, opening, the, the reviews were really, for me, kind of nice. And for, by the great Clerman, who reviewed for the Nation magazine, he said uh, he didn't like the production, didn't like anybody in it much. He said, but Earl Hyman's manages to create, create a sympathetic portrait of the Prince of Morocco. Well, my star shot up from then on. I, mean, I hate to brag, but now I'm so old, and I don't consider it bragging if it's the truth. Mrs. Roosevelt came and sat in the second row of the orchestra, and I had this fantastic exit had a fantastic costume, all white with heavy stones, supposed to be diamonds, and this great big beige cloak. And at my disappointment and not having won my beloved Portia, I would take this cloak and sweep it around me and throw it over my shoulders and exit. Well, I guess because I was nervous because of Mrs. Roosevelt, whom I adored, as we all did really in those days. <laughs> the cloak instead of going over the shoulder, went over my head as well, and I couldn't see to get out or off the stage. It was just a moment of extreme panic before this great lady. Oh, it's terrible. Mm -hmm.